Hey, what's going on? So today, I thought we'd take a look at um, pulse width modulation and uh, duty cycle on a fuel injector. And talk about some more about our fuel injection, injection things we've been talking about. It's kind of all at the same time, but in a video format, kind of like looking at one in the wild. Okay, so what we're looking at today is an O2 uh, Dodge pickup. I'm going to bring that up here on Pro Demand. <coughs> if you're still with me, yep. All right. In Pro Demand, I said, by George. Oh, you got to be kidding me. I'm using my little tablet, so of course it's not going to have everything recorded because why would I do that, Mr. Groom, after all? Uh, hope that's the right one. Hey, I did it right. Good for me. All right, now, as I said, yes, yeah, save it, you piece of garbage. Anyway, 2002 uh, Dodge pickup. Wasn't it a Ram then? No, it wasn't a Ram then. 4.7, thank you very much. It's rear-wheel drive. It's an automatic. Bear in mind that regardless, uh, it wouldn't matter if it was four-wheel drive or, or automatic in terms of the engine, and especially in terms of, you know, in case of the injection. Oh, you got a standard transmission? Okay, well, we're doing something different, okay? It's awful nice then to put all my fuel injectors up toward the front. That's cute. Okay, so here we go. Look at these, you've got a dark green with an orange tracer. That's gonna be my hot wire. Well, how do you know it's hot, Mr. Goob? Well, because I'm not stupid, I guess. Now listen, we've talked about this many times. I want this to be crystal clear for you people. The common wire, like on almost every fuel injection system out there, the common colored wire is the hot wire. And we're switching on the ground. That is almost a hundred thousand for eight almost always i mean like if i would say that it is exactly always universal but it's not uh, perhaps somewhere in the world but it, okay yes there it is okay now screw if i were to trace these back where would they go well being as a dodge as i wouldn't be shocked if it went to the auto shutdown relay okay but let me zoom in a little bit there because they get they all get their power from the auto shutdown relay probably let's go take a peek see but what you will see is is that they should be hot when boom when is this hot hot at all times baby that's what it looks like it says to me anyways but whatever okay so it comes out of here when is this baby hot it's hot when this is on when this auto shutdown relay is on this piece here is hot at all times the auto shutdown relay is controlled you see right here, whoop, from here, this is the control to turn it on. Now, right now this relay is open, so my injectors would not be on, but watch this, click here, come over this way, and you will see this goes to auto shutdown relay control from the PCM. But when does the PCM get power? PCM gets power when, wait for it, you turn the key on to the run position or the start position, okay? And so that, that will have to be true, okay? So coming back over here, you're like, oh, let's go take a peek at it, okay? So here we have them. Come on back, there you go. And so again, our dark green and orange will be our power wires. Okay, so a couple things to take into account here. Um, first of all, make sure if you're taking the air cleaner off, which I just did on this baby, okay? So we've got inlet air comes in over here comes out through here just through the filter box okay when you look at this if you look like all right there's where it comes in right there or, well that's the filter box. this is the filter box that just goes through that big box that big plenum of a deal there's nothing on here okay right now that tells me this engine does not have a mass airflow sensor and we're going to look that up in a minute if you saw sticking out of this air tube or somewhere in it wires in a probe it's a dead giveaway. You, my friend, have a mass airflow sensor engine. This engine will run the way it is right now with that with that throttle body exposed just fine. Okay, if it had a mass airflow, it would not. Okay, so you got to know that about your car. I was just noticing that throttle body is a little dirty in there, so I might clean that up while I got it in here. So we'll talk more about that perhaps later on. Now, when you poke yourself in here a little bit, let me get some light on the subject here. Always something. Always something, I swear. 
always. Okay. What I want to talk about now is, if you look at this, okay, here's our fuel system, okay? So let's come in here. Okay, there's your there's your fuel rail right here. Okay, it's obviously a coil on plug set up. But underneath of here, you will see our injectors are right there, one over there, and so on. Okay. Now, here, right here, I got a fuel line coming in. Okay, oh, I should say I have a fuel line attached to it right there. Mr. Rip, is this a return type or a return less system? Well, I see one line. Every one of them has to have a fuel line, right? So that's pretty cool. Does it have two? Well, I don't know. Where would I know? Hey, boo boo. Uh, let's get a picnic basket. All right. So on that side over there, I don't see any lines coming off of the return. Oh, any return lines coming off? Now, is it possible it's at the very back of this? Perhaps. Let me stick my mitt back in there and see if it gets bit or anything. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, now I don't see it, all right? Now, I don't see a second line coming off. I don't see one at all back there. Now, it's possible that I'm missing it, but I don't see one, okay? So, let me just point out this injector from right here. See right down in there? That's the injector and it sticks up into the fuel rail. They all look like that. So, We've assessed the situation. So far, it looks to be a return less system. We will go double check. We'll go double check in the, oh, wait, no, wait. We'll go double check in the system, see if we can figure out that's true or not, okay? Again, every time, every car, when you get to it, assess what it looks like. And then, obviously, check with your data. So let's go back into Pro Demand. Okay. Uh, we'll look at the wiring situation here in a minute. So we'll come back to the wiring situation. Let's come back into here. And let's type in uh, fuel pump. <coughs> let's go see if we can read anything about this. to give us a clue what kind of fuel system this is. Interesting. Not the sensor. Don't care about that at all. Okay. All right. There it is. Pause this placement, yada yada yada, da da da, yada yada yada, da 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 da, ta 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 ta, ta 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 ta, yada yada yada. Uh, one moment, please, while I figure it out. All right, I figure it out. When I find it, then I'll get back to you here, and we'll chat some more. Okay, so I did a little more poking around for like about two seconds. Okay, and under fuel pressure regulator, okay, this particular one has a situation where the regulator is actually in the tank. Okay, so when the pressure gets to where it's too high or whatever, the comp it just routes the return right. It's inside the tank. It just routes the excess fuel back into the tank. In other words, this is a technically a return type system, but it never gets to the rail. The excess is just accessed right back into the tank right through number four. So boom, and it comes right back out if there's too much. Okay. And so it doesn't need it. It's just, it comes right back out through there. In other words, it never really gets out of the tank. Okay. So whatever, just a different kind of way of doing it. Okay. So for the next thing I want to talk about, we're going to be looking at a. We're going to be looking at again our. Um, we're looking at our um, connectors, and we're going to be taking a look at you know could we is there a way we could tell which one's the hot side and which one's the ground side without a uh, wiring diagram? Of course, the answer is yes. So you could always take yourself a paper clip and use this as a back probe pin. Okay. Likewise, you could get and go buy yourself an actual back probe pin. Okay. This one has seen better days. <laughs> if, if they're kind of limp like that, a fella should get a new back probe pin like this guy. Now, the idea with these, again, and most of you know this, some of you don't. Well, let's draw a picture again because it's easy to do. If I have a connector, 
I have a connector here like so, whatever. And it's going to go on to my, let's say this is my fuel injector down here, whatever. Yay, whatever. Down. The wires stick up here. Okay. What we're going to do is take this pin and stick it inside right next to the wire. This is called back probing. Back probe. This is how we like to probe. We do not like to face probe. Okay. That is if, if you unplug this wire, well, number one, we don't like to unplug wires at all until we know. Because sometimes when you unplug a wire, you can kind of fix a problem. You can kind of fix a problem by wiggling something a little bit. And when you wiggle it a little bit, it can actually, that could have been the problem. It could have been loose and you wiggled it back together to where it's not loose anymore. Okay. So we don't like to pull the connectors apart when we can help it. Also, if you pull them apart and you start the vehicle, or you turn the vehicle to the run position, it will throw a code because it goes, hey, wait a minute, there's a problem on this fuel injector now. Well, I should say so, because it doesn't, it thinks, okay, there's a circuit's going to be coming through here, okay? But it doesn't see that circuit, and it goes, oh, that's an open circuit because you unplugged it. That's on you, pal. Now you've got a check engine light on, which if you're at home, you know, I don't know how you're going to fix that, right? I mean, there's, there's, I guess there's ways. In the shop, obviously, we can use a, 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 we can use a scan tool, but for whatever. Now, what I'm going to do is take you over there now, and I'm going to point you in the general vicinity of the plug, and I'm going to back probe it. Okay, when I get it probed, I will bring you in for the, the kill shot, if, as it were. Mr. Groom, I see it now. I can totally see now. Yeah, yeah. That's great, pal. All right. So I am going to hone in here on this guy. Now I'm going to end up back probing both the green and orange one and the other one both. And then we're going to see, you know, whatever. Now, ouch, that's my head. Now, as you can see, I think if I get down here a little bit, the pin is sitting right next to the wire in that connector. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my test light. Now, by the way, Mr. Groom, I want my mom to buy me something for what's the next Halloween. Um, the next thing that's coming up is what? Uh, like St. Patrick's Day. Yes, yeah, so for St. Patrick's Day, Funk, tell your mom to go buy you a test light. Okay? And or Easter, she can put it in your Easter basket or something. It's very cheap gift it's a very cheap tool okay but it's very important to have again it's an incandescent bulb i've connected myself over here to ground and i've connected myself there hey there's no power well i should say not sir because i don't have the key on okay now allow me to turn the key on omg osh i didn't make a good contact apparently I need to make a better contact there. Yeah, apparently. Okay, now, <laughs> that's the problem sometimes with back probing. Sometimes it's hard to make sure you get in there all the way. So I'm going to try again. I did not make a good connection, apparently. There, I bet it, I bet it works now, Mr. Groom. Now, for the sake of argument, I'm going to set this up here and I'm going to run a jumper wire to it. Uh, ordinarily, I would not do that, but I want to set up here so I can see what's happening when I turn the key on, okay? So I want it to be weird. Okay, so again, all we're doing is we're seeing which of these two wires has power on it, okay? Now, um, all I'm doing is putting a jumper wire to my actual test light that's up on the dash here so I can see what's happening when I turn the key on. So I don't want to be like, see, it worked. And you guys are like, no, no, it didn't, Mr. Groom, you weirdo. Okay. So up there somewhere is a test light. Uh, here. Well, I don't know. Look at it. Here, come with me. You guys look at it at the same time I look at it. How about that? All right. Focus on it. Focus. Okay, something is not kosher. Something is weird. All right, sit tight for a jiffy. Mr. Groom's going to get this. Okay, now 
I'm a little irritated at myself. The problem, sir. Okay, now I'm just a little irritated at myself. We're obviously not making a good connection on the back probe, and that's what's killing us here. Ah, it's frustrating. I'm gonna turn this light off for a second. I'm going to pause you while I get a good connection there because this is a little frustrating, Mr. Groom, a little bit. It's frustrating me. I'm not doing a good back probe. Okay, so keep an eye on the light. Understand that the computer is only going to uh, power this up, okay, as, as uh, for just momentarily unless it sees crank signal, okay? So you should see it be on for about a half, I don't know, about two seconds or so maybe. So that's a dead giveaway. We've gone from the injector hot side, or from one side, I should say, to the battery. Okay? So when we've done that, boom, we sent power to it. There you go. Now, interestingly enough, what would happen if I put it on the other side? Okay? Well, you're like, well, would it, would it matter? Yeah, it will matter. Because on the other side, if we put it in the other side, and then we go to battery, uh, battery uh, negative over here, <laughs> this light will come on. But let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to pause you for a second while I get switched around. Okay, so pay attention this time as I'm doing this. Okay, and, and notice that what should happen is, is you now have, oh, fart. What you're seeing now is, is that now you've got the injector coil, which is going to be a resistor, in series with the flashlight or the uh, test light, which is also going to function as a resistor. It means your light is not going to be nearly as bright this time. It's going to be a little less bright. Now again, if you, you're, you're keen on that, you're like, oh, I got this. Now again, again, in the real world, you're like, I don't have a wiring diagram for this and I can't find it on the giggles. All right, well, what, what a guy could do again is you could unplug this connector. If it's unplugged, and then, again, I prefer you back probe it, but you could face probe it gently, but don't jam it in there, just gently. And I prefer you back probe it still. On the green-orange wire, you will have power. The light will light up when you turn the key on, momentarily again. Again, it's going to throw a check engine light if you do that. On the other side, it is not going to have power. Okay, It will not have power because there's nothing for it. It's going to come down, and there's nowhere for it to go through and come back out this side. It's going to be stuck. And so if you did that, that's another way, a dead giveaway, who you can tell which one's which. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the other side. I'm going to pause you for a second. And then we're going to hook up the scope. And we're also going to hook up our uh, voltmeter here. And we're going to show a couple of things with that. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to measure percent of duty cycle. And I also want to talk about pulse width modulation. So when we're talking about that, it's the same principle, okay? Now, the key to remember on this, you can do this with a regular, if you have a high-grade DVOM, okay? Not just any, okay? So don't get me wrong. Like, if you go to Walmart and you buy one for like 10 bucks, it will not have this feature on it, okay? But you can get them for not that much money, okay? So you don't have to spend the money for a fluke, like, you know, a couple $300 or something. You can get one cheaper than that, it will do this. You must have the percent and hertz button on H, Z button, okay? Now this is also imperative. Now we've been going from the hot wire to ground on the battery, because all we were interested in is where we're getting power. But what we want to know is when is this baby on, when is it off, okay? So it's imperative you back probe both of them. So I'm gonna show you that on the vehicle right now. Uh, fair warning, it's a lot louder than it was before because um, without the, uh, the breather on there, that, that part of the, the resonator there, it gets a lot louder here. You can hear it sucking in the fuel. So there it is, the air rather. You can see I back probed both of them. So then over here, I've got this baby set up on volts DC. And then I've pushed this button, the HC button, and you see it says percent right there. I'm gonna hit both of them in a few minutes, okay? So let me start her up.
So you can see that I idle, we're at about 4%, 3.5% duty cycle. Okay? Now, I'm going to prop this up a little bit. I'm going to, because I have to reach over there and hit the throttle. And I'll rev it up so you can hear it again or see it. Okay, so what you saw there was clearly at higher RPMs, Marcy is going to be holding it on for longer. And it's going to have a bigger duty cycle. Okay, again, you must have this Hertz and percent button. Now, I can also hit the percent button one more time, and it will come out to Hertz 5.37 or thereabout Hertz. Let's chat about that. Five point three seven hertz. What does that mean to me, Mr. Groom? That means the time frame between on and off cycles, where or not the time frame. It, what it, well, what it means is is five hertz. Well, five hertz is five times per second. Let's do some easy math here. Per second, that it does its thing. It switches it on and off. You're like, oh, okay, so that's one second or zero. Here's one. So that's 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. There you go. Nice and even. Yes? Now, wait. How did you know it's 0 0.6 and 0 0.8? Well, that's 200 milliseconds, 400 milliseconds. And how do you get one divided by 0 0.05? Or one divided by five, rather, is 0.2. Okay, 0.2 seconds or 200 milliseconds. Now you're like, wait a minute. Weren't we saying we were at about a 4% duty cycle? Yes. Yes, we said that. That is exactly what we said. So then how long is it on for? Well, wait a minute. Are you saying 4% of 200 milliseconds? That's exactly what I'm saying. Wait, what's happening here? Point of, oh yeah, eight milliseconds. In other words, the computer is leaving it grounded and turning the injector on for eight milliseconds at that point. Okay? Now you're like, wait, when it jumped up to 20%? Oh, that's a good question. It's obviously going to be spraying for a longer period of time. Okay? Now, at that point, when the engine was going faster, we should, we should look at that here. I'm going to go look at that in a second, too. When, we, when the engine is going faster, of course, then the cycles per second or the hertz goes up. If the hertz goes up, then what happens? Well, if the hertz goes up, then the time frame, the 200 milliseconds, is going to get smaller. So you're taking a longer, a bigger percentage of a smaller amount. So don't be all, oh, it's holding on for 40 milliseconds? No. What's going to be happening is, and I'm going to go do this on the screen right now, when I start it up this time and I rev it up, I'm gonna have it on Hertz and I want you to see what's happening here. Now, again, if I had a, uh, uh, a guy to help me here, I could have a guy pushing a button and going back and forth between frequency and, and percent duty cycle. But right now it's on about seven and a half Hertz. And you see it went up to about 23. Now, again, these are all ballparks. Everything's happening, but it's always relative. Always. That is 23 hertz. Well, I need a calculator, Mr. Grimm. Well, so one second divided by 23 is, well, you moron, is about 43 milliseconds. And so if I'm doing that and I get, well, Mr. Groom, what is, hypothetically again, what is 20% of 43? You know, it's like 8.6 milliseconds that it's spraying fuel for, okay? Now you're like, is it ever going to be a whole, is it gonna be a huge variation between low speed and high speed in terms of how long the injector's on for? No, not really. So, you know, 
Mr. Green like like a whole millisecond? Maybe. But not like this. Well, it went from eight milliseconds. Now it's spraying it for two minutes straight. No, it's ridiculous. Or even from eight milliseconds to like 16 milliseconds. It won't be like that. Okay? So keep that in mind. The faster the engine goes, the higher our frequency goes. That's hertz goes. Yes? Because that's how many times per second it's spraying fuel. Obviously, it has to keep up with the engine. However, however, it's going to have to leave it on for a higher percentage of that. But it's a lot smaller number. Yes. And so that we had the first time I did, I got like about eight milliseconds. This time I got about 8.6 milliseconds. You're like, is it always going to be in that ballpark? Well, probably for this engine. Yes. Probably for this engine, it's going to be somewhere around the eight, nine, whatever millisecond mark. Mr. Graham, what about my car? I don't know about your car, sir, but that is kind of where we'll get in. Now, the next thing I'm going to set up, I'm going to go ahead and set up the scope. Now, again, scope are kind of expensive, and the average guy probably can't afford it. Okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and show it to you anyways. It's important to know how it works to be able to use them. However, however, also note that when you do these guys is... Um, uh, they're important to use in the shop applications. However, you know, if, if you're in your, in your yard, in your garage at home, you may have to use the DVOM. And a good DVOM can give us most of the information we need in this case. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and hooked up. I've tapped, I've just, and on the same back probe wire on the hot side of the coil, of the, of the, uh, fuel injector coil and now I'm going to the battery with the black side okay and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure this thing here I'm gonna go ahead and start the vehicle we're gonna watch this for a second I go over here and hit the stop button So, a couple things come to mind here. I'm going to zoom in on this fella real quick. Right here. Boom. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in a little tighter. Oh, Judas Priest. No, stop zooming, Jay. Stop. Good criminy, sir. Criminy. Good night, nurse. You idiot. I'll try it again. <laughs> Good night. What an idiot. Okay. So you see here we're running battery voltage. Okay. Current steps up. It's kind of weird. Something's a little screwy here. I'm going to check my connection. Something a little weird. It should be a little different than that. Let me pause you for one moment. See if I can get this figured out here so we're not wasting much. Okay, so I knew I was screwing something up there. So the thing to do, the thing that I wanted to do, the thing that I should have been doing is I should have been on the negative wire, the, the control side wire for that uh, fuel injector. And here's why, okay? I have the other side hooked to the battery ground. So the difference between, and of course that, as it comes through, it's gonna feed through that, that um, injector but it's not going to go all the way to ground whatever there's a difference between them of about 14 volts and you're like oh well, why is that well because the engine's running the alternator's going now right here i'm only triggering on one of these injectors so it pulls it to zero now why did that happen because marcy inside the computer grounded it down and the computer is the the, the scope is monitoring the difference between battery ground and what's happening on the other side. 
Well, when Marcy grounds it, she is connecting it back to battery ground. What difference will there be? There will be zero potential difference. I take my voltmeter and I go from positive to negative, I get 12 volts or whatever, okay? That's the potential difference. But when Marcy opens that ground and goes straight to ground with it, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to be pulled down, so there's zero potential difference between the, the battery, which is connected to, on the negative side of the battery, which is connected to my Pico on the one side, and then my other side of my Pico is connected to that ground wire, it's connected to Marcy, which gets connected back to the ground. No difference between them. None. Okay? So, when this happens, right here, this distance from here to here, when it's all the way down the bottom, that's when the injector is firing. Okay? That's a big deal. Now, note, from here to here, okay, check it out, it's about, well, Mr. Grimm, can you measure that for us, please? Gosh, you know I'd love to. OMG, gosh, it's about 130 milliseconds. Interesting. Interesting. Mr. Grimm, show me more, show me more. I'd love to. Wait. Are you saying that the one is 133 and the other one is 137? What? Four milliseconds? That's right, friend. Four freaking milliseconds. Okay? Now, you know, what are these other little spikes, Mr. Groom? Well, remember, the green, orange wire, green, red, whatever it was, green, red, I think, is connected. to. They're all connected. So when that injector turns off, you see this big spike. You see that? That's what's happening on every other single one of those coils. When it turns off, every time you turn a coil off, there's going to be what's called back EMF. It produces some voltage. This is what we're measuring when that happens. Okay. Now, it's possible if a feller wanted to, he could go find the, the main red green wire that feeds all eight injectors, and he could have monitored it back there. Okay. But in this case, uh, you could monitor current in that, in, that, in that situation. You could monitor how much current's going through all of them. That's not what I'm doing. I am measuring voltage. So I am on the, again, on the negative side of the fuel injector. And I'm measuring there. So the current, the, the, the high side is coming in from the, from the, from the, on the red green wire, going through the coil of the injector, coming through the other side of the injector, coming through my Pico, and I'm measuring from there back to my battery, and I'm seeing a difference of about 14 volts initially. When Marcy grounds the circuit, she pulls it down to zero, and there is no difference between those two. Now, this is what is referred to as a pull down circuit. That is when Marcy grounds it on the negative side, she's pulling it down from a battery voltage down to zero voltage, okay? It's called pull down circuit. We'll look at these a little bit more in depth. Again, that's something you've seen it. We've talked about it a little bit. We never defined it. Well, today we're defining it, a pull down circuit. So Marcy on that, when we, when we measuring, again, we're measuring that negative side right there. The difference between there and the, bat, and the ground on the battery is about 14 volts. When she grounds it, she pulls that side down to zero because she's grounding it. And the difference between the two is now zero. This is called a pull down circuit, okay? Obviously a pull up circuit would have to be what? Uh, uh, the other side switch, hot side switch, okay? Not a huge deal, but we don't see that too often. Most of the time we see pull down circuits. So again, what I want to talk about today was to see one of these things in real life, in the real world, to look at uh, percentage wise, kind of things here. Oh, Mr. Green, you didn't figure a percentage on this, did you? I didn't. Let me try to find a percentage here. So if my, if my, if I'm doing four divided by 133 or thereabouts, come on, you hippie, you will see that's about 3% pulse width is what we're saying, or 3%, um, 3% duty cycle, all right? Now, Mr. Green, will you want to rev it up for us a little bit? Well, you know I do. You know I do. So I'll do that real quick. I'm going to go start it up and rev it up a little bit. Okay, there's you some data. Now let me rev it up a little. Oh, stop, stop. No, stop, stop. Oh, no. Oh, 
not the end of the world. I pushed the wrong button. It's not the end of the world, though. So what I wanted you to see was, is like, let's go back in time a little bit, step back through this a little bit. And you will see they're quite a bit closer together, Mr. Groom. They were. You're not wrong. Woo! Look at that. OMG, Osh. They're only about 32 milliseconds apart. What? Yes. Now, if a guy were to zoom in on this, you're at 102 and 106. OMG, Osh. That's like four milliseconds again, Mr. Groom. Okay, again. Again, it, the, this is more accurate than it is the other machine, okay, we were talking about. What, again, we were looking at about, I think, what we were looking at before, another one, eight milliseconds or something, okay? Something in that ballpark, and we we're talking about four or five percent. That's good for just generic looking at. The scope is better, obviously. But you got four percent out of. Uh, you get four milliseconds, I mean, rather, out of 30 milliseconds. So four out of 30 is something like... Something like 13% duty cycle there. Okay? So, similar pro... Well, what happened here? That Just a minute. That looks goofy. Hang on, Mr. Groom. you got to be on that side, you moron. I thought I had it there, but I guess I didn't. Mr. Groom, you're... Oh, you're a dope, Mr. Groom. It should be like 138, Mr. Groom. OMG, Osh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a horrible person. So let's do 4 divided by 32, which is, is 1 eighth, which is 12.5% duty cycle. Yay! Okay, whatever. Okay. So again, of course, <coughs> of course, our uh, the scope is going to be more exacting. No one is shocked by that. It is a very expensive and very cool piece of tool piece of equipment where did my did he did he go where oh where did it, here it is i'm going to plug back in one moment please anywho uh the other one mimicked it now kind of relative kind of relative in terms of it like it showed us the same kind of pattern but what it didn't show us was um the exact, necessarily exact figures. Okay, I'm gonna trust the Pico over the other deal based on I know what this thing is like, and I'm gonna go with that, okay? All right, now we'll talk more about this next time.